Hi from Los Angeles. My name is John Kyo and welcome to the Future of Food 10 by 10 blockchain series. In this highly anticipated series, I'll speak with 10 blockchain companies for 10 minutes to get their views on the key challenges and also the key opportunities in the food industry where blockchain may be beneficial. And today I'm delighted to have with me from Italy, Marco Crota. And Marco is from Quadrants Foundation. He's a blockchain expert. Marco, good morning or good afternoon to you. Good morning, John. Thanks for having me here. Now, Marco, the time goes very, very quickly. The 10 minutes we have together goes very, very quickly. So in the first minute, can you tell us a little bit about you and also your company? Okay, I am a tech guy. I work on blockchain since uh, about maybe four or five years now. Uh, I am a developer, a researcher, um, popularizer of this technology. I teach about companies about blockchain. In um, Quadrons Foundation, I am one of the members of the foundation and I also work with Food Chain, which is a company that is applying blockchain uh, for food traceability. So we have our own platform is already working and in production. Fantastic, that's great to hear. Now, Marco, uh, what do you see or what have you seen as the key challenges that an industry like the food industry are facing today? Well, as you said, I'm from Italy, so for us, food is a very sensitive topic, as you might imagine. Um, from my point of view, what, uh, the reason why we started with Food Chain, this um, application, is to try to uh, put a stop to uh, many frauds that are around the food industry, especially for what concerns um, risky food or false labeling on food, or especially for what concerns made in Italy products. We have a lot of issues with um, Italian sounding products like um, products that mimic some sort of Italian name. You have uh, Mario cheese or other stuff that actually have nothing to do with Italy, that they never even pass by over with an airplane over Italy. So the, the idea is this is basically to what we see is a fraud. There is, a, of course, a lot of money involved in this, and that's the main reason why we have them, sadly. Gotcha. So um, around the sensitive nature of the food industry, you mentioned that that's key and uh, the area of uh, food fraud, uh, mislabeling. And of course, uh, Italy uh, is very proud of its own products. And when you start shipping those products around the world, you don't want others copying them. So fantastic. So Marco, uh, when you look at the key opportunities then in the food industry where you believe uh, blockchain can be beneficial, what, what do you see as the key opportunities? Uh, well, the, to me, the key is that blockchain as a technology is something that uh, puts a very strong accent in transparency, in the accountability of who uses the platform, and also in the capability of uh, your uh, customer, whether it is the, the, the final user of, of your product, the, the buyer, uh, to have the opportunity to make... Um, independent verification on the data you provide. So this is basically the reason why we're using blockchain on the food industry, because basically it's uh, raising the um, level of difficulty for those who want to make a counterfeit product, because uh, basically what you should do if you want to use a, a blockchain solution is lie about your product, but your lie stays in the blockchain forever with your name. So the idea is that we are, we are putting um, a very strong reputational uh, dilemma for the people that are trying to fake products uh, by saying that what they claim about the product must be real, otherwise sooner or later their lie will be uh, facing, will be seen by everyone, will be uh, surfacing, especially because the data in the blockchain is public. So uh, everybody should be able to verify the data and to look at the data, especially your competitors, which probably will be the first one who will try to do that. Gotcha. So transparency, you pointed out as one of the key uh, opportunities and also accountability because everyone is, uh, is contributing to the same uh, blockchain. And you, you mentioned independent verification of the data itself. And you also some, mentioned something that uh, is near and dear to my heart, and I talked about I talk about a lot, is the fact that uh, we can have immutable lies within a blockchain. And yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. I'm happy you, to hear you mention that. It yeah, is you, I, I can't I can't prevent pe people from lying, but what I can do is say, okay, I will record forever what you said, and this is going to be there, uh, and you will be possibly uh, called to justify what you said in any moment from here on in the future. Gotcha. Now I want to circle back to the challenges that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You mentioned food industry, of course, is very sensitive and you talked about fraud. 
Can you give me some, uh, maybe an example of where you have seen fraud in uh, for Italian products? Okay, uh, we lost a client a couple of years ago when we were at the beginning because uh, this client was producing ham um, and we had to call this person and say, hey, uh, you can continue using this technology, our, our solution, our platform, but uh, I have to warn you that there is something that you might be aware of. Uh, there is a point in your supply chain where something strange happens to the pig that didn't enter this uh, location because it seems that you have regular pigs entering and then some Somehow in this location, those pigs grow three or four more legs each because the numbers do not add up. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of ham that gets out uh, is, uh, is not twice the number of the pigs that get in. Uh, and this person said, well, can't I lie? Can't I just try to hide this and that? I said, you can do whatever you want, but it's clear as the sun that there's something wrong in here. We lost that client, but we were very lucky in this because not even six months later, we had that news all over the papers that showed where exactly those extra ham were coming from, and it was a fraud. So um, this to me is a very uh, good example of the fact that you might not even need to really use the blockchain, but just the fact that you know that you cannot lie or will be called to answer for all the lies if you lie. Uh, are there, then this is already enough to stop people. It's like having a, a very big, strong light in your backyard and prevents us thieves from to coming from your house. That's it. Gotcha. So I think I've seen uh, cases are very similar to that where bad actors want to put in a blockchain because the, they think that the blockchain will give them that trust in the supply chain that they need when in fact they are doing something that's uh, potentially illegal. Now on, on that point of, of trust, if we go over to the opportunities again and we look at the independence and verifiability of the data, uh, I know that you commented online around blockchain and trust should never be in the same sentence. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, because, uh, well, if we go back in history to the first blockchain ever, of course, we refer to the blockchain of Bitcoin. And the claim that was uh, in, a, in, a, in a main list of cryptographers about Bitcoin was we took away all the trust elements and replaced them with cryptographic proof. So the idea is that it was clear from the beginning, from the first tweet of this technology, that the idea behind the blockchain is removing the need of trust and replace it with something better. So if whenever somebody tries to sell you a technology, a solution which is based on blockchain technology, and somehow it refers to trust, or there is a trust party, or th there is some information that you cannot access that you have to trust somebody else to give you, that is a very weak use of the blockchain because basically it's, it's using the blockchain to do exactly the same thing that was the blockchain was born not to do anymore. So the idea is, Trust to, to us in this technology is a bad word. The motto of this technology is don't trust, verify. So what you have to do every time you design a solution is provide a way that people can be able, of course, they must be able to do that, but they can verify by themselves any information that you put there. If you prevent the people from um, being able to look at the stuff themselves, then this is a, it, it's a fraud in the fraud. It is, it's a scheme that should prevent the fraud, but is making one. Uh, sadly, there are many blockchain solutions that are based on so-called private blockchains or other trust-based systems that pretend to use the blockchain. Actually, they're just distributed databases. So beware of the type of blockchain solution that you have. Last talk that I gave to the um, uh, European um, Digital Week was exactly about all the many mistakes that a lot of companies are doing while implementing the blockchain in the food industry in the wrong way. So beware. Blockchain is not civil, civil bullet by itself. You have to know how to use it right. Yeah, solid guidance there, Marco. Uh, I appreciate that for sure. Now, you, you, you mentioned something around uh, blockchain and public uh, DLTs. Uh, can you talk just a little bit about that? We have about one or two minutes to go, but can you talk okay. a little bit about... Some companies um, are saying they have a blockchain, but it's actually a DLT and not a blockchain. Yeah, we have DLT since 1975, I guess, or something like this, and they never changed the word because they don't have that, pot that potential. They, they are not going to anyway. Now, um, DLTs are like the, the moon. They are shining, but because their actual light is coming from the sun, which is the blockchain. So the idea is if you have a DLT, you have just 
data that is replicated in different places. That's basically what a DLT does. It has its rules and so on. But the, the, the main difference with a real blockchain is that blockchain uses consensus. And that thing is the set of rules that say, we know that in between our a group, somebody will try to use the blockchain to cheat. And the rules of the system itself prevent that cheating to happen. You don't have that thing on DLT. Uh, also, for example, in DLT, you can cha change the data if you want. Because DLT are very small, there is an owner, so they belong to someone. So they, this someone can say, hey, guys, shut down the computer. Let's change the data in the database. This can happen. It, it, by the way, it already happened a couple of times, but this cannot happen in the blockchain. So a real blockchain must be public and must be with a strong consensus mechanism. Those are the key ingredients, and maybe they're not even enough, but they are necessary if you want to have something that is accountable and that is verifiable and that is really immutable. It must be public. Because okay. actually, actually what you're trying to use this technology to show the public something, so, so it must be a public technology otherwise it's like putting uh advertisement banner in your private website that only you look at it makes no sense gotcha fantastic uh, marco my last question for you um if you were up in front of 50 ceos of food startup companies what guidance would you give them i would definitely say look at the blockchain with um a challenging or uh, an adversarial thinking way um Luckily, many don't trust the blockchain, and this is good. This is good because they have to really dig into it in order to understand it and to understand how this will change um, the way that they make business because blockchain is there not just to replace databases. Blockchain is there because it's going to change um, your value proposition, and then it will change all the way you do business, because if you change the value proposition, it changes everything, the marketing and so on. <clears throat> it's not just a marketing tool. You don't have to use just it, like say, um, I'm very cool because I'm using a blockchain. No, you have to provide something. You are um, called to show the user what you really do. So it's, you, you say, it's a commitment about transparency. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it all the way from Italy, Marco Crota with some valuable insights. And thank you so much, Marco, for joining thank us you. today and sharing your, your insights with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.